before recording this episode, I forgot to uh, mention what the point of this run is and kind of put up the summary slide. So I'm doing it right now to show, and just to keep it consistent, we're playing on the hardest difficulty, on the hardest asteroid, on the worst seed we could find, getting every achievement. We have a lot of other restrictions on ourselves, so this run is really just trying to go through the exercise of what's the hardest run possible, see if we can do it. Okay, I forgot to do it during the video, so let's get started. Hello, friends. Welcome back to our pain colony. We are still tremendously in pain, but we are looking up a bit, I would say. Um, I say a bit because we're still not in the greatest shape, and if you were watching the last run, you know that we're not in the greatest shape, but we're alive, um, and that's what's important right now. So uh, this particular run, let me just do my typical tasks that I need to do. Let me lullaby these eggs real quick. So we gotta keep these going as much as we can. Uh, yeah, so anyway, we are just barely surviving. The biggest thing that I really need to pay attention to right now is getting up all the little construction projects that I need. Um, I also took that eighth duplicate and I don't have space for them in my great hall, I just realized. So I need to find a way to expand this a little bit so that they can use it. Um, could just make this multiple floors, actually. It's not something I've really done very much, but... That might be the easiest way to do this. Don't particularly like that, but I guess that's fine. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to be worrying right now about crossing the threshold for this Locavore achievement is our biggest focus. We are almost there. I think we're going to do it on this cycle, meaning that we will now be allowed to plant stuff in farm tiles, hydroponic farms, planter boxes, that kind of stuff. So we will be getting our mealwood up and our food situation should, should really start to transform to something that's a little bit easier to deal with. Bubbles, can you not do this? Or sorry, doubles. Pronouncing your name wrong. Uh, no. So the other thing that's a big concern right now that a lot of people have been pointing out is we need to rethink our priorities that are set up right now. And I agree. So let's do that really fast. Um, the priorities that we have are centered a lot around cooking because we've needed it so badly. Um, so that's a good thing to start with, but I do need more farming and ranching in general. But there was a couple of questions about whether I should respec dupes entirely to have like a different focus. And let me look here. This new bubbles looks really good for building, so maybe I will transition them onto more of a building role. I like how Stinky was just, he came in at such a bad time, it was like, ah, you don't have a job, just get in here. Uh, so yeah, we need to rethink this a little bit. I need as many people on ranching as possible, because keeping the ranching going is the only way that we're going to make that carnivore achievement. So, Abe is already a builder for us and can do ranching. I guess I'm fine with leaving him that way. Maybe we should just, oh man. Hmm... Yeah, maybe we should focus uh, doubles more around building, because we have a lot of building projects that we need done right now. So let's do that. Uh, get doubles out here. Change the name to Builder. There we go. And let's just change the priorities really quickly. Off of farming and ranching and into building and digging. That should help us out quite a bit. Is everybody else specialized decently well? The slow bubbles is still reasonably slow, but not horrible. So I'm going to start letting her around the base a little bit more. But again, a lot of this is going to change quite a bit when it is time to uh, start planting all of our mealwood, which we are really close to doing. So when that comes up, um, we'll transition into that. And in the meantime, I'm just going to let my duplicates work because I need the rest of these little projects to be all built out so that uh, we're not getting such bad air pressure in some spots. Let me get Jean off of this so he can go hug some eggs. I'm gonna go hug some eggs. All right, uh, we'll check back in just a bit. Okay, I think this is it. I think we got the Locavore achievement. Hey, there we go. Now we are no longer bound by not being able to plant food. So let's turn this corner now. Um, I'm just going to create a bunch of areas to farm some mealwood. I don't need this bin anymore, so we can probably build there. 
Um, I will be keeping my shine bugs in here. I really need to start uh, ranching these. I have not done that yet, so I should probably get on that. Uh, before we make them extinct, that would not be good. Uh, we do also have an achievement, by the way, to uh, basically domesticate every type of critter that there is. Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we have tamed a shine bug already. Okay, so we're not at risk of losing that, but I do want these shine bugs for a couple other things we're going to be doing a little bit later in the game. For, like, radiation and power and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to do something I have never done before on this channel, which is talking about, like, a shine bug reactor for a couple of different purposes. So, yeah, it should be pretty interesting. So, yeah, the other big concern, uh, and one we've kind of been putting off here, is the heat creep is getting kind of scary in some places. It's really mostly scary because if I start growing mealwood, the mealwood has a strict temperature range that we cannot exceed. So pretty much everything that's on the edges here is starting to not grow because of the body temperature. And even the oxyferns and the arbor trees have a higher tolerance than the mealwood. But you can see some of my mealwood already is starting to not grow because of the body temperature problem. So we need to transition our food here, but we also need to start walling our base off the best that we can. Uh, with these tiles to preserve that. So, going to be a little bit of uh, an exercise here to transition, but I think we should be okay. Just going to start building out some spots like this. I guess I could probably build this door underneath here instead. Get it one more over. There we go. But yeah, just going to start building out some places like this for mealwood so that we can start growing it ourselves. And I'm also going to stop producing lice loaf now that we're at this point, because I do think it's more efficient if you're growing mealwood to just let them eat the raw meal lice instead of the lice loaf. Plus, uh, we've used a lot of water just to get to this point, and I'm a little bit nervous about staying in this biome for this long with only that little amount of water. So I do want to at least have some ready for if we need to do any cooling type of operations. Otherwise, we won't really have a way to keep this going. I need to keep these lullaby by the way. Although I think everyone's about to go to sleep, so I should probably not do that. We'll get them up here in just a second. The other thing to make mention of is I am keeping an eye on all of the different types of eggs that I should be lullaby so that if one egg gets laid, I will just look at this menu on the side here and note that it's been laid so I can move it. Um, the problem is that if I have, let's say this room is full of hatches, um, if one of them lays an egg, they will all basically stop their reproduction, or at least go down to... I, I think it is down to zero, if it's cramped. Um, these are not being tended to right now, so we are losing a little bit of production on this, but... Uh, if there is ever an egg in here that is disrupting it, that can cause a lot of problems. So I need to be aware of that type of stuff, and that'll be what I'm tracking over here on the side. So, yeah, let's start getting our food up, and then that will help solve some of the problems that we're dealing with right now. And I'm going to do it in a very compact way, because we only have so much space before it's going to start getting too hot from this heat creep that's coming in here. So, yeah, still a lot to do. Okay, I just wanted to have a little section in here that was actually me just playing the game, because a lot of people have been asking to just, like, basically watch me micro stuff for a little bit. Um, so I'll just kind of do that for the time being. Oh, we're on a... We're on break right now. These aren't going to get lullabied. But yeah, a lot of people have talked about, like, uh, would I stream or just play the entire thing? And I just don't think that I would be capable of making that entertaining. I feel like this format really works well for me because I can focus on the things that are interesting that are happening and kind of edit out all the other stuff. Um, but I do realize that people still want to see kind of the decision making and the little, like, micro decisions that are happening here as well. So I'll just kind of play for, I don't know, maybe 10 minute block or something like that and just kind of narrate what my thoughts are and we can go from there. Why is this hatchling out? I'm going to reject this. I don't need another duplicate right now. So, yeah. I would like someone with irritable bowels, but no thanks. So yeah, just going to be kind of checking through these. I need to make sure to keep these things spinning. And the big issue that I have right now is I don't have enough people that are operators. My farmers typically get stuck providing power because there's no farming tasks to do. But then they need to come up here and hug the eggs and nobody's operating. So I should probably have somebody that's like a little more specialized in operating. 
The other good thing is, um, I'll put my cooks on this. My cooks have done a really good job of keeping our food up. Um, so I've shut down two of the microbe mushrooms for right now, and if I need to turn them back on, I can. I just want these farmers off these machines so that they can keep these eggs going. Uh, and keep as many of these things lullabied as possible. I also did make enough metal to get another incubator, so we should be able to get that here in just a minute. Put an airflow tile here. This is not great airflow as it is. Actually, that's a bad place to put it. Let's put it here. There we go. Disconnect it. Gotta scan around for eggs. There's none that I don't know about, so there might be one pip egg. Yeah, that just got produced, so... I just need to check around every once in a while to make sure to move the eggs out of here so they don't get the status effect on them, that they can't lay any more eggs. Uh, let's see. Heat problem. I still have not quite figured out when to start walling against the heat. We can't just ignore it because it is getting worse for sure. But, uh, the only thing we really need to protect once again is just our mealwood area. So I'm just trying to get that done. I'm trying to keep our air pressure up. I could probably put in some more aluminum. Let's get that for another incubator, because our uh, eggs for pips are really going to start getting uh, quite a bit here. Also, like, moving a hatchling is not that big of a deal, because it's not like it's really capable of doing anything when it's in the baby state anyway, so I don't know. Maybe that's not as big of a concern. Oh, this all needs to be insulated tile. That's why. I'm trying to expan expand this down so that this awkwardly shaped room is like the full 96 tiles, so I can fit all eight hatches in there. That's going to be the idea here. Are all these lullabied still? Yep. Yeah, and this is part of what makes this so challenging is like you have to check back and keep a lot of plates spinning all the time. If there was like a no pause thing, which a lot of people have talked about, that would be incredibly difficult. Um, I feel like you would lose track of things all the time, or at least I would. So I'm not going to be trying anything like that because this is already a lot of things to remember and constantly bounce back and forth between. Also, the tightness of the carnivore achievement I don't think is as bad as advertised. These might be some famous last words, but I feel like this is pretty doable. Also, this is a big waste of time to have the builder come up here and reload these all the time. Priority, all... Let me set these back down to, like, fives. There we go. Yeah, so... I don't remember what I was just talking about. Oh, well. I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, the carnivore achievement I don't think is as tight as it's advertised. I think there's actually a good amount of room here to get uh, as much meat out as you need to get this. It's not easy by any means, but I do think that this is more doable than it seems, even though it seems like we're behind. So we'll see what exactly happens by the time we get there. Let me see if we can... Abe, are you capable of doing this? Yes, you do have ranching. Okay. Maybe I can just get him to stay here and do this instead. Yep. No. Okay. Whatever. Someone else will have to come up here and do it. But yeah, just kind of need to keep these plates spinning. And we're just going to do our best. I think we're going to make it, but I don't know. The other thing I need is I really need this other uh, pip ranch area to be opened up because we're going to start hatching some of these eggs pretty soon. And we need a place to put these, so... I'm trying to make my routes as short as possible to get over to the places that I need to go. So, I'm gonna create another row of, uh... What are these called? Incubators up here. So, I will build a floor here, but I need a more convenient way to get into this room without, like, sacrificing the size of this one. I'm only keeping, like, six pips in here. I could probably fit one more. So I guess we could go up to seven here, and then I will just kind of draw a line uh, through here so that we can get up into this area a little bit more effectively instead of having to go all the way around or all the way up here. Especially having to climb these stairs. These stairs are very inefficient in terms of, like, movement, so I could prevent duplicates by walking that way by putting a door here, but maybe I won't. So let's see. Uh, I need a door here for sure, but I don't want to open this up because that'll ruin the set up here, so... Yeah, just kind of want to come in maybe like this. And that'll be the way that we get into this room, so we don't have to go all the way around, but... Yeah. So there's little, like, micro-decisions of these shapes and stuff like that. Can be kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if it would... <laughs> make it entertaining for very long, so... 
But I do realize that people kind of want some stuff like this, so we'll just kind of stay in this for a bit. You can stop mopping that. We are basically out of water at this location, by the way, so I guess I will just mop the rest of this up and then we can use it. And I'll deconstruct this and we can maybe rebuild this a little bit. I was actually thinking that there's too much travel time through this lab that's not really doing anything. This lab was in a pretty bad position overall for being like so centralized to everything. So I probably should have put all my food right here. Would have made it a lot more convenient to get up and down from the center ladder. The other thing we could do um, that people have been recommending is making another nature reserve somewhere. There is an achievement to make four of them, and we will do that eventually, but I don't know where it is or what it's called, but it's in here somewhere. Is it this? Yeah, okay. Uh, we do need to build four nature reserves at some point, but um, people have been talking about making it your, like, ladder area, so that if your duplicates are always going through the center to just make it a nature reserve if you can. I don't know if I still can. I might be able to just put a pip here to have it plant some plants and then make all this connected by one room. But what's the max size on a nature reserve anyway? 120. Hmm. I don't know. It might be too far gone, but that's potentially a thing we could do. These all still lullabied? Nope, that one's not. Let's see if we can get a farmer up here. There we go. Hey, big old hug for that egg. It's feeling so loved. There we go. This one lullaby? Yes. So yeah, just a lot of manual checking to keep this going, but don't think it'd be... It's not too bad once you get into a rhythm of it, but I know that it's a lot of mental load if it's not something that, like, you're typically doing. Also, it'd be interesting to look at how many hours I actually have in this now. I feel like I'm close to, like, 4,000, but I don't know how much of that is, like, forgetting that my computer's on and letting it sit there, so... Who knows? Okay, so yeah, we'll just kind of keep going here. I'll edit into the next part. I feel like that was a decent size. This is kind of like a simulation of what it would be like if I didn't do any edited videos, and I was thinking about doing something like that at one point. Um, if you're into that kind of stuff, let me know, because I'm interested to see like what type of format you like in these videos, um, or just in videos in general. And also, I'm curious, like, what are you doing while you're watching these videos? Because a lot of times I'll watch videos when I'm like working or doing something else. So I'm curious about that too. But yeah, I do get a lot of people asking for kind of a more like long form content like that. So here's a little preview for you, but we'll call it good here. Let's advance forward to the next interesting part of the run. Okay, been a few cycles. Uh, Doing okay with this transition into more of our meal lice stuff. Still taking a long time to get everything up, but the transition is moving over slowly to the point that uh, I think that we can start shutting down these micro mushers once again. Um, we are just barely scraping by with our food, but I'm not that worried because if I need to, I can activate these. And my duplicates jump on this, and they're very efficient at making uh, mush bars by this point. So it looks bad, but. Uh, Confidence-wise, I feel much better than I did earlier. Uh, we're in a decent pattern here with incubating and lullabying these eggs. So I do have three sage hatchling eggs that are kind of all in there at the same time. The pip eggs that are supposed to be cycled in and out of here will get basically... Their buff will drop off all at the same time, so I'll just swap all three of them out. So pretty good kind of flip-flopping back and forth, even though I don't have as many incubators as I would want. So every time that I see the opportunity to, I will just request four more batches of aluminum so that we can create another incubator. My builders are taking a little while and I have had them prioritizing getting other things up, like this other pip ranching area, uh, and getting a my meal wood up, so... Yeah, a little bit of a juggling act here, but things have really settled down from the previous point where we were scared of death at every turn, but I think we're getting better at this point and uh, really just gonna start moving out and starting to get all of our walls taken care of. Um, yeah, this this heat is not great, but it's also not horrible. We do need to think about it here soon, but I just wanna stay on top of the eggs since that's the most important thing right now. We're also gonna need another hatch ranch eventually, which I might just kinda stick in this area um, once it's time. I did wall off the rest of this so that this was a shorter room. 
I don't think this is a latrine anymore. Yeah, um, it's too big, but not that worried about getting that little bit of extra morale. Um, and I did lose some containment on getting all of these outhouses filled. So uh, there was a rampant uh, cleaning of the outhouses, which is not great, but I'm also not that worried about oxygen right now. And I'm not going to be taking any duplicates for a little while, so I think we're fine. I think our more reactor is kind of doing its job. Uh, these are finally getting groomed um, so that they should start laying a lot more eggs and we should get our population of shine bugs up. Yeah, lots of different things going on here and a lot of different things to juggle in and out of uh, attention for myself, but yeah, not the worst thing. So yeah, just kind of keeping on it, pulling the eggs out of the rooms when it's time for them to be pulled out once they get laid and sticking on it. Uh, we're really just going to be aiming for that carnivore achievement, which we really haven't made any dents in whatsoever because not many critters have died to eat at this point. So I think we've had two pips die which is where these ca we these calories came from. I must have lost a little bit due to rot, which I said I didn't want to do, but yeah. So we made a, a tiny bit of progress, but we still have 56 cycles left in order to get carnivore, which is our big focus right now. But it's also just like transitioning on here, keep expanding very slowly, and not waste my duplicates time too much. But yeah, we'll keep going. Okay, I think this has been the longest break that we have had in terms of uh, cycles between edits, so it I guess that's a good sign, meaning that we are stabilizing and kind of getting into more of a normal flow. Um, the big concerns that I have right now is my hatch terrariums are starting to overfill, so I definitely need more space with that, but I can't really emphasize enough how important it's going to be to keep these rooms as maximally sized as possible. Uh, the biggest that you... I don't even know if that's a word. Maximally. Anyway. Uh, the biggest that you can have these stables is 96 tiles, so I'm gonna get these, like, weird spots where you, like, fill out the rest of the tiles by uh, creating on these little add-ons. So, that's gonna be the idea. Liara, what's going on here? Go get food. Uh, so just gonna create some of those and then a second terrarium is gonna be right here for hatches that we're gonna need to get in there and just keeping this unblocked as much as possible and keeping these eggs lullabied as much as possible is very important for this stage of the game. Uh, so yeah, just kind of keeping up on that. The mealwood expansions are going quite slow, honestly. Um, it's not that big of a problem and I will typically turn this micro musher on and off about middle of the day, depending on how many calories I have, so... Still looks like we're just barely scraping by, uh, and we are, but that's intentional, so that we can use as much duplicate time as possible to uh, getting our ranching, uh, or rather continuing our ranching, and getting more and more bandwidth up here. Uh, just to explain the mechanics of the carnivore achievement a little bit, because I don't think I have explained this a lot. Uh, the idea here is, like it says, we need to eat 400,000 calories before the 100 cycle. The thing that can be kind of discouraging about this is, like, this is not going to be linear progress at all. Um, this is going to be kind of like a big period of preparing to get as many egg uh, eggs being produced as possible. And then when you're at a point that you need to start actually eating those... Uh, Critters that pop out of those eggs. Sorry, let me micro this first. Just a second. Make sure we get this all done pretty efficiently. There we go. Uh, so when I have as many critters as possible laying eggs, that's where we want to get to so that we can be on 100% barbecue as soon as possible and uh, eat as much meat as possible. Like I did mention, I do need to ban them from eating meat at this point because barbecue does count toward it. And whenever you make barbecue, it winds up giving you more calories for the calories that you actually invest. So if I were to eat raw meat, it's only 3,200, but if I cook it, it's an extra 800, uh, which can definitely help out with this achievement. So it's going to be very non-linear progress in general, as I micro this a little bit more, uh, where it'll look like we're not going to make it, and then if we do make it, uh, it'll be at the, like, the last minute. So... The conditions, or rather the restrictions that I have here is for pips, I can really only keep as many pips as I can feed at a time. So I just need to dial in how many arbitraries will support however many pips. And it's actually a lot. 
Um, so I'm just going to max that out as much as I can without starting to starve any of the pips. So that they're laying as many eggs as possible. If I catch any pips, by the way, that are not going to make another egg and are at a certain age, this one actually, coincidentally enough, might be a candidate for me to just kill right now. Uh, just to get it out of the way so my duplicates aren't spending any more time uh, grooming it. Let's see. If we do everything perfectly, then it will stay on 17% per cycle. Doing math on stream is a very bad idea. This might get another egg out in time. It'll be really close. Uh, it just depends on how, like, it's not a 95 point something. So I'm going to leave this one alone. But if I do find any other ones that are at age, like, I don't know, 98 out of 100, and the reproduction isn't even close to putting out another egg, we might as well just kill that uh, pip and get it out of there so that my duplicates don't have to manage it anymore. This one is borderline. Let's see, 93 and 17% a cycle. I think I could just barely get one more egg out of this pip. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, just forecasting the best I can and using my duplicate time the best I can. There's a lot of things that we could do, but it's really just about what can I actually afford to do with the time that I have with my duplicates. And the biggest focus really needs to be getting this population uh, raised as soon as possible and micromanaging these farmers so that they can hug the eggs correctly and we can get them all swapped out. So, yeah. Lots of stuff to do here, but uh, again... Like, this is 90% of what's going on right now is just me micromanaging this, and it will be this for a little while. But as more things happen, um, I'll keep you updated on it so that we can kind of play through this together. So, yeah, just getting this next room up for the hatches, kind of shaping this one out is my next priority. Then we'll be moving on to more stuff, more rooms for the pips and whatnot. So, yep, keep going. Okay, uh, I was getting comments about this actually, and I'm glad that it happened. Uh, this is a cuddle pip egg. We have never talked about this on this channel before, and I haven't really actually used this uh, at all. So this is exciting. Uh, we have a cuddle pip egg, and the good thing about them is they are able to help out with uh, hatching these eggs a little bit faster. So um, what I'm going to do I'm wondering, I guess this if this pip can climb the walls, which I don't know if they can. Uh, I guess we'll see when they get hatched. But uh, if they can, all the eggs that are in here will get the benefit of uh, the cuddle pip. But I do need to make sure that this uh, is contained in an area that I can control. So I think I'll just delete a tile here. Actually, no, I'll delete this one. Um, so that the Cuddle Pip can change levels, assuming that it can walk on the walls. If it can't, that'll be interesting, but we need to get it in the incubator as soon as possible to get this out, because that will help the eggs hatch faster. So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, we'll kind of see how this goes, and this can also help your duplicates get a little bit more happy over time. By the way, we are really dropping low on the calories, but we should get around a meal wood. Or rather, around a meal lice tomorrow that will help out with this. But, yeah. So, interesting to see that. Uh, that'll be hatched here as soon as possible. And we'll kind of figure out how it works once we get it. Alright, one issue that is slowly becoming an emergency is the travel distance between this pitcher pump and all my food. Um, I have been setting up another area just to have a pitcher pump kind of replace this right here. I probably should have just left the original one there. But uh, the issue is that obviously this water is going to run out at some point, but the travel distance is so long that it's actually putting my colony at risk because I'm not producing enough food right now. So what I think I need to do is I need to start up the research to get plumbing going, which we don't even have, which is pretty funny to not have it by this point. Uh, to get this done so that we can start setting up a pitcher pump setup right here That's closer to the food less travel distance that kind of stuff I could also replace this with tiles to help them move just a little bit faster, which does add up over time But um, so much of this is just on a razor's edge. I'm not actually sure What can be afforded right now? Um, I know the numbers look the same as they have before when I've been more confident, but the fact that they're barely rising at times when I need to, like, overproduce it just to catch up uh, is kind of worrying. So I think that I just need to focus on getting the plumbing done 
so that I can get this in here. Plus, if this runs out before I deal with this, then we're, we might just die because of that. So I will need to have a second uh, setup here just to grab the rest of this water. And those two pools of water, in addition to this, is pretty much all I have. So we are running very low. I could also prioritize getting more mealwood down, but I can just barely keep up with everything else that needs to happen here. And this is, again, the same type of issue of if I take more duplicates, it'll help, but then I'll have to feed more duplicates. So we're just going to keep running into that cycle over and over. Um, so yeah, I, I'm feeling a little nervous right now. Um, but I think that we can still work this out. And I think the biggest issue is just the travel distance to go down and get this, uh, this water. The other thing that's starting to become a problem too is uh, a couple of my oxy ferns, three of them, and that's three out of the, what, like nine that I have planted down here, have stopped working because it's too hot. So I may need to also get a carbon skimmer out, which I don't, oh, I do have it researched. Okay, so if I have the uh, plumbing up, then I could probably just put a carbon skimmer or something right here and set something up to uh, clean out all the carbon dioxide that's here, because I'm sure I'm losing a good amount of duplicate time just because they need to go catch their breath. Um, it's not horrible, but if they are in this area and especially working and stuff like that, that is something that can be a run-ender with this type of setup. So, yeah, a couple little concerns here that we need to clear up. So I'll just kind of focus on getting the plumbing up so we can at least solve that problem first. Okay, plumbing has been researched and we are now setting this up in a way that this should just keep this area full of water and available for someone to pump it in and drop, run it right over here. Look how much faster that is than having to come all the way down to the bottom to refill these. So much, much more efficient. Uh, so crisis sort of averted. The next thing is with this carbon skimmer, we are definitely going to need to get it up because we don't have a way to deal with this and it's only going to get worse over time. Um, all of this is unbreathable because it is carbon dioxide, but I don't have a great way to deal with the output of this. So the way carbon skimmers work is I will send clean water in, but polluted water will come out. I don't have the uh, research to clean it right now, and I don't know if I can really afford to get it. Um, because if I need to produce sand, which we do because we're not allowed to leave the biome to go get this... Um, that is a huge hit to productivity. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to research our liquid reservoirs and I'll set up a reservoir to just store our polluted water for the time being until we can clean it all up. Um, it's better having it than letting it gas off and I'm not having any oxygen problems right now, at least in terms of production. Uh, so as long as the carbon dioxide is out of the way, the production should keep up. Uh, so that's gonna be, I think the plan here Oh, this room is too big now. 104. Let's see. So that'll drop it down to 101. I need to remove five more, but there's five more here, so 10. So 10 tiles gonna be covering up to right there. Okay. Just gonna make all these rooms the right sizes. Actually, I probably shouldn't do that one yet, but we'll replace it. All right, anyway. Uh, oh, there's one more here. So that, okay. So yeah, um, just going to keep plugging along here, but I also do think that this video has gone on long enough. Um, I think we should probably call it here. I'll call it a day. I'll get the video posted the day after that this is finished recording, which uh, really should just be April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day. Ha <laughs> we're all fools for trying a challenge like this. So very appropriate. All right, cool. So I will see you back here for the next part here very soon. Once again, I am not recording the next part until I release the previous one. So yeah, that'll be out soon. And then uh, another one will follow it. I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep up day by day like we've been doing so far, uh, mostly because the run timing is gonna spread out quite a bit. And I don't know if I'll be able to fill, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, whatever minute videos with uh, content that's going that slowly. So we'll see. So, okay. Yeah, uh, we'll pick this back up next time, and thank you very much for joining me. Uh, thank you again for all the comments and everything that you've done to help me out thus far. I appreciate it. All right, see you later.